We talked about it before. Uh, even on his better days, Blake Snell can sometimes be a, a tough watch for Padres fans because of all the walks and the stress of the runners on base the whole game, but not last night. Last night uh, was as good as it gets from Blake Snell. I mean, it's his typical six innings. He didn't go further than that, but... Yeah, bloop single by Mookie Betts. I bet, I bet he probably could have. I bet he could have given, given you one more. Yeah. Uh, you He's know, got about 80, what did he finish with? 86? Yeah, no, I mean, I, I definitely think they could have gone out there, but only bad things could have happened at that point. Not suggesting they should have. I'm saying he could have it in a different scenario with the Padres, you know, in the race, needing that win, close ball game. I can see him going out there for the seventh. Had he, he threw, not given he up. 91. Yeah, had he not given up that, that bloop single to Mookie Betts, which seemed like it, it hung up there forever on the first batter of the game <laughs> and i thought it was going to get caught just on watching on television you go oh that's a routine out but it just n- couldn't just right between juan soto and trent grisham and neither of them got there particularly quickly and it ended up falling in and, and if that hadn't happened and he had a no hitter then i think you definitely let him keep going and, and see what he can do because really what is the Cy Young winning the Cy Young is yes. It's about having good stats, but it's also about crafting a narrative for the season and you're convincing voters. You're not convincing them an algorithm or, you know, you're not plugging in a formula to see who wins the Cy Young award. Eventually, you know, ultimately you're, you're kind of convincing a group of writers, the baseball writers association, the, the ones who have the vote on the Cy Young award to put your name on that ballot, uh, you know, in the number one slot. And like any human beings, they're going to be somewhat influenced by a good narrative. And, you know, Blake Snell has kind of his, the arguments in favor of him. And I think Justin Steele of the Cubs is going to, you know, the back, his backers are going to point to his record and the fact that the Cubs are in a playoff chase. And, you know, that's valid. That's a, that's a decent part of the argument. So Blake Snell just needed something on his side and i, and I thought well, we talked about it yesterday heading into the game like that's that was his last real test i don't know where he's at where his next start or two are going to be for the rest of the season but that on the road against the dodgers that was his last big test well that's for his see so the last two starts in particular to me they were the narrative crafting starts I agree. I agree with that pitching against legitimate playoff teams down the stretch on the on the road going into houston and, and while he didn't dominate he beat the astros and then go and dominate the la dodgers plus as we mentioned earlier doing so and you know it's not a coincidence that aj castle that story gets out that you know blake snow was given the choice do you want to face the dodgers or would you like you've earned it we'll give you a little extra rest you can go on friday against the oakland a's in front of two thousand people and a team that uh was no hit into the ninth inning yesterday you can go ahead and just build up great numbers against the a's <laughs> and he said no give me the dodgers now you know, that's great narrative. That's great storytelling right there when you're trying to convince some voters. When you don't have the the playoff argument, you're not your team's not in it down the stretch. You need something else. And Blake Snell just gave it to the writers. He also has, if you're looking for narrative, the stretch that he's on. I saw it last night. I, I, I'm trying to find the, the, the tweet that had the numbers. But essentially, he's the first. His, his stretch of his last 20 starts with an ERA, what is it, like about one and a half, is the longest best stretch by any pitcher ever. Like even Pedro Martinez at his prime. Wow. He threw in a bad one at some point in 20 starts. And Blake Snell has been so good since the start of May. It's like historical levels. For me, I think that makes it easier for voters to to put Blake Snell's name down as well. They look, yeah, he had a bit of a rough April, but if I mean, that's so long ago. Who's been the best pitcher the last five months in baseball? It is no question it's been Blake Snell. Like, no question in anybody's mind that Blake Snell has been the best pitcher. Didn't have a hot September to get back into the race. It's been 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 consistently phenomenal over the course of the year. Justin Steele also, and it, it doesn't reflect in his ERA, but he's given up 12 more runs than Blake Snell. They were a lot of them were unearned, but... They did score. You know, they came in in terms of preventing runners from getting across home plate. Blake Snell has really done it better than any other starting pitcher in baseball this year. So 
I think you've got a lot of really good arguments now in favor of Blake Snell. Both guys have, I think, three more starts. Uh, Justin Steele will go tomorrow against the Arizona Diamondbacks in his next start. Obviously, two wild card chasing teams, and that'll be one that a lot of people are looking at. You know, he'll need to, he'll basically need to match what Blake did yesterday to kind of keep keep up in the wild card race or in the Cy Young race because if the the Diamondbacks hand him a bad outing. You, know, you can pretty much start crossing a name off. Zach Gallen had a rough outing yesterday against the New York Mets. Pretty much crosses his name if he was still on that I don't list. I know that he was still there. For the Cy Young, <laughs> but you can pretty much cross his name after a, a rough start. He got beaten by Joey Lucchese. He got called up for the Mets. And uh, they, they kind of took uh, Zach Gallen to town yesterday. So, But you think, he, you think he locked it up last night, Snell? No, because there are three more starts. And if, you know, if Snell gives up nine earned runs the rest of the way and Steele gives up one earned run then the numbers will shift enough that it's not over yet but now I think Blake Snell is has got a a lead in the clubhouse that is going to be difficult to overcome in the last three starts of the year he's probably looking at a Rockies Snell play the Rockies next week yep and then either the Giants or the White Sox if they push him back so yeah, he'd he'd start probably the he probably start the middle game maybe against the Rockies next week and either the last game against the Giants or yeah. they said I I saw that he's he could start three more but maybe they only do two more starts for Blake Snell maybe. if he's ahead maybe you kind of cruise in well it's like Ted Williams the last day of the season <laughs> be interesting if Blake Snell is you know scheduled to pitch the last day of the year but if he's got the ERA lead and everything else do you sit on that and go. I'm good. I'm just going to I'm just going to not risk a bad start. A tight. Or or like Ted Williams who um, you know, I think, you know, he was hitting over 400 and they said, "Do you want to you want to just sit today last day of the year, you know, guarantee the 400?" Right. And he goes, "No, I'll play." And he got a I think it was a doubleheader and he got like seven hits and ended up hitting 406 or something instead of 400. So, we'll see if that happens at the end of the season and he's got a decision to make. I'm I'm excited to watch the race for the Cy Young Award. I want Snell to get it. I like Blake Snell. Um, I I can understand that there is a part of the fan base that either doesn't care or is disinterested in it or just flat out is like, whatever. Like, he's not going to be here anymore. But I still think it's important. I think it's a good thing for the Padres to have a Cy Young winner. I think that stays in your franchise's history forever. And quite frankly, like we've had this argument back and forth for the last couple of weeks. What do you want to see from the Padres for the rest of this year? What are you looking for? Do you want them to show fight or do you want them to lose every game from here on out uh, through the end of the year and have a bad taste in their mouth? I think they've already got the bad taste in their mouth. I am looking for them to show a little bit of fight heading into the off season. And I do think Blake Snell winning the Cy Young Award, Tatis winning the gold glove out in right field. Those are just little victories that we can at least grab onto. And be yeah, like, I mean, right, we cool. talked about the uh, you know the benefit of tanking, and if you can get into the bottom six, you get to keep that draft pick as opposed to getting knocked 10 slots down. I really don't think that's going to happen. You look at the remaining schedule. You just mentioned it. It's A's, Rockies. Three against the A's, three against the Rockies, three against the Cardinals, three against the Giants, three against the White Sox. I mean, the, the Giants are the only team with anything to play for left on the Padres' schedule. Yeah. I mean, the Padres would have to, I mean, not just tank, but they'd have to be the tankiest tankers like, that have ever completely tanked mail it to really have anything worse than like a, you know, a game or two under 500. You'd have to play so poorly because remember, you're going to be going against other teams that also have an incentive to tank a little bit at the end of the season, just the ultimate tank off the last couple of weeks. And as we just saw, they took two out of three from the Dodgers on the road. They're not in tank mode. Uh, maybe. I mean, they even shut, they didn't play Manny Machado or Xander Bogarts yesterday. Gave both of those guys a day yeah. off and still went out and won six to one. And they're not going to tank on days when Blake Snell starts for sure. You know, we just said he's going to get at least two, if not three more starts in the last 15 so, yeah, tanking seems to be off the table. Might as well just play as well as you can these last couple of weeks. And, you know, it, I don't believe in carrying any momentum or anything in the next season. We'll have all forgot about these last weeks by the time spring training rolls around. But Whether they lose the rest of their games or win the rest of their games, going into spring training next year, it was it's going to be how do we not repeat the 
absolute epic failure of 2023. As you said, though, the uh, you know I've heard the argument. Well, I don't, I don't want him to win the Cy Young. That's just gonna you know raise the price tag, make it harder for the Padres to re-sign. I really the the tea leaves are pointing toward the fact the Padres aren't going to re-sign Blake His Snell price anyway. It's going to be what it is. You, you might mean, as you might as well let him. Jack up the price as much as possible. And Julio Urias getting outed as a scumbag for the second time. Those are much more impactful on Blake Snell's value in free agency than winning the Cy Young Award. He's going to be by far the best pitcher. Either way. So, yeah, I I think Cy Young stand forever. You know, Randy Jones is the testament to that. (laughs) They belong to your organization. And while, yes, there'll be a tinge of uh, bittersweetness knowing it's coming right at the end of Blake Snell's tenure and. God, wouldn't this have been better a couple of years ago, you know, when Blake was, uh, you know, we still had a chance in a playoff run? Sure, of course. It's not the ideal circumstance that you win a Cy Young for a guy who's a free agent and leaving your organization. I still think it's better than not winning the Cy Young. So, yeah, I'll be I'll be pulling for Blake uh, on that one.